Beautiful. We welcome you to our Easter service this morning. Good morning and welcome to Somerset Church of the Brethren. Today is a beautiful day and it's a day that's filled with great hope, isn't it? And great promise because Christ has arose and is risen forevermore. Great day to be together. What a beautiful day. Thank uh, to each of you who have uh, provided the flowers, uh, Easter flowers in honor and memory of loved ones. And so we thank you today for uh, uh, participating and beautifying uh, God's house, the sanctuary this morning. Appreciate so much. We're glad you're here and trust that the joy of the resurrection will just lift your heart and uh, give you the expanse of trust and hope and a beautiful promise that uh, Easter brings. May it be applied to your heart in wonderful ways even today. So we're glad you're here. And as you are, are there any announcements, uh, additional announcements to be made at this time? Okay, would you uh, stand uh, and join with me for the call to worship? And it's on the back of the bulletin as well as up on the screen. Uh, screen and let us uh, share in responsively. While it was still dark, Mary Magdalene ran to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. While it was still dark, other disciples ran as well in search of their beloved Jesus. While it was still dark, they could see the linen wrappings and the emptiness of the tomb. While it was still dark, one stood weeping, afraid of what was lost. While it was still dark, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. And moving amongst us. As you're standing, let us join in our first uh, Easter hymn together Christ the Lord is risen today.
Once again, amen and amen. Thank you so much. It sounded beautiful. Thank you for that wonderful singing. At this time, the juncture of our service will gather for the giving of our tithes and offerings. Lord, this morning we're so grateful to gather together in this Easter service, Lord, to have our hearts captured once again and pulled to the outstanding, the, uh, the substantive, uh, all-consuming evidence 
that Jesus Christ has risen and risen forevermore and brought peace and hope and happiness and excitement. Lord, may our hearts just be captured by it as we in a few moments uh, share in a song and glorifying you and your word to open up those special things of, of the joy and excitement of Easter. May it be ours this day. Thank you for each one as we return a portion back to you and remember that all things come from you. Thank you for your hand of blessing. We lift these gifts to you, the Father, that all your intended purpose will be meted and measured out to your honor's glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand for this uh, hymn, Low in the Grave He Lay, or Christ Arose. Sounds wonderful. You may be seated. God bless you. What joy. Boy, that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Joyce and Pam. Appreciate it. Each of you taking part in the service. Uh, Brittany, thank you so much. Greg and, and Barb. Uh, thank to Barb and all those on the Food and Fellowship uh, Service Commission. Thank you. Uh, uh, food was good? Oh, good. Okay. Great. Thank you to all involved. We appreciate that so much. This, uh, this morning, are there joys, answers to prayer to share? Hi, this is Geraldine Harrington. I have a request from, uh, from my sister, Donna Connors, from Ohio. Uh, she called me just before I left to come to church this morning. She's on her way to the emergency room. Um, I'm not too sure what's going on yet until I get home, and she calls me back and lets me know what they found out. Okay. All right. Joyce?
Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Say again. Say again, buddy. Tomorrow. Happy birthday. Yes. Oh, boy. Wow. Boy, lots. I'm not sure what's the mic itself. The better? It was too close. Okay. All right, lots of birthdays. Any other joys? Well, as Geraldine mentioned to member Donna and specifically for Don, uh, if you're in prayer, are there other uh, requests, concerns this morning to add? Yeah, we have a Sharon and Brad Kramer. Shara, okay. Okay, Sharon? Okay, okay, okay. Any other? Pastor Ron, yes. please keep um, Don and Pat Seckler uh, in our prayers. Uh, Patty was diagnosed with ALS. Any others? Uh, keep Max Moss holding her prayers. He was moved to hospice on Thursday here in Somerset. Okay. Any others? Okay, let's uh, take this moment that we have corporately and collectively. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Loving Father, we thank you as a congregation. Lord, today on this day, as uh, it's never redundant or trite, but truly, Lord, you've brought the greatest hope, the greatest certainty in your resurrection. You put the final stamp on death itself. And Lord, you've conquered death and hell and the grave itself. And Lord, we thank you today for the triumph and the victory of the resurrection and what that brings to us. We have loved ones who have passed on and it's the joy of the resurrection that gives that possibility of being reunited and having the reunion and seeing them once again, all because of you. Lord, without that, we would be men and women most miserable. But Lord, there's great joy and great peace. And Lord, uh, give us that uh, expanded sense of what, of what peace, joy can be ours today and the excitement that comes with it, all because of you. 
We thank you this day as we think of the praises and the celebratory uh, birthdays and special times in the life of our church here, of individuals and families. And we're so grateful and thankful for that. And we just ask that you give them a special day tomorrow and this week and that, that day that, uh, Lord, it will just be a blessing. Thank you uh, for each one today being here and to that, uh, Father, through your Holy Spirit, that you'll just continue the encouragement. Be with Gerald, Geraldine's, uh, uh, with Donna and with Don and, uh, Lord, this situation, that you'll be able to bring uh, great strength and uh, upholding and sustaining, Lord, in, in her life. And, Lord, uh, just work in wonderful ways. We uh, think, think today of, as JT mentioned, the tragedy of the family this morning, and we pray, dear Lord, that you will be with and, and all through that. And we know that uh, it just, just uh, so sudden and so much uh, is unknown, but we pray that uh, you might be in the midst of that and the, the care that's needed and, and Lord, uh, the, the, your presence to be there to bring support and all that's needed as they move through. We uh, pray, as Brian mentioned, for Don and Pat, and we pray your special blessing uh, of your, not only your presence, but uh, the strength that you can bring that uh, you as well will help them uh, each day as they move th forward and that you'll help them as they uh, not only deal with the sudden uh, prognosis and the word that was shared, but also, Lord, that there be ways to help to minimize and to, to give uh, 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 much uh, a life to come. We know sometimes everything seems to just stop when we hear of such situations. So we look to you today and just ask you to be with this couple and to give them hope and renewed sense uh, as they move forward with you. We remember Jean and Max and uh, just this past week talking to Max and, and, uh, and seemed to be uh, uh, doing fairly well but having some difficulty with his legs and fatigue. And so now as he, uh, obviously things are uh, rapidly or hurriedly moving uh, in not a positive way. So we lift Max to you, the Father, that you might attend to him in, in just wonderful ways. Uh, Lord, embrace him and hold him and uh, help him and be with the family. And Lord, at this time, it just uh, seems to be so much at one uh, uh, situation. But Lord, move through with your guiding hand. We uh, do thank you uh, this day as we think into our community and ask your rich blessing uh, for so many wonderful things. Continue to be uh, with our firemen, first responders, police, policemen. Uh, just this week as JT heads up the uh, senior, center, senior uh, care. And Lord, for just uh, ways to uh, enhance and to speed the process of the vaccine. So we thank you for, for that and pray that uh, there's much funds and many things that are just shoring up things that may be lax. That Lord, may you just bring that about in area on aging and others as well. We thank you. Remember today, as Joyce mentioned for Larry and Crystal, we think of Larry and thank you that he is home and that uh, they did get the blockage uh, and things are moving forward, but we pray uh, for the things that he yet has to do. And so pray for both this couple that you'll help them and aid them and uh, just uphold them in many wonderful, wonderful ways. We uh, just thank you this day for the joy that's ours. Lord, as we open your word uh, in just a moment, but we're going to have a, uh, just a time to hear special music to bring you glory and honor. And so as we continue to listen and participate, but also to look to you, may, may it ring in our heart today in wonderful ways. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, at this time, we are privileged to have special music. Uh, the Cooster and Yoder family, and Jessica. <laughs>
Amen. Wonderful, beautiful, thank you so very much. I don't know. Greg, I may have to take it off if it, I'm not sure what's, but we'll try it. If it gets, I'll have to remove it. Thanks once again, it's beautiful. As you're here, uh, as we turn to God's Word in John chapter 20, for our reading this morning, uh, verses 1 through 9, John chapter 20, verses 1 through 9, I ask you to stand together in honor of God's Word as we share with it. Verses 1 through 9, I think we can handle reading this together, don't you think? Let's share God's Word together. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. You may be seated, and may God's Word be a great blessing to our heart and life this morning. Do you believe in life after death? The boss asked his younger employee. Well, yes, sir. Well, that just makes everything just great. The boss went on, Uh, an hour after you left yesterday, uh, hour after you left left yesterday to go to your grandfather's funeral, wanted to let you know he stopped in to see you. (laughs) It's somewhat of that sentiment and that story there that if we did not have John chapter 20, if John 19 was the last of John's gospel. That's all we had and did not have chapter, chapter 20. You would just say today that there is a great man, an excellent biography of a wonderful great teacher, a wonderful man, a kind man, a compassionate, loving individual. You see, I know that you have studied biographies of great men and women, but it always at the end is what? They, they had died. They passed on. So if all we had was John 19 and didn't have John chapter 20, because in John 19, it, in verse 41 and following, it seems to say to us in here, at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever laid, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby and laid, Jesus there. It seems that At the end, even the greatness of men and women, that they pass on, they they died. But you see, Jesus was more than just a great, did a tremendous teaching, moral absolutes that he taught, taught about life. He was a tremendous martyr. He did, he's just a superlative teacher. You could give many, describe many adjectives, describe how great he is. 
And all we would do is come, if we just had chapter 19, we would say, well, there is a great man we'll always respect. But you see, if, there isn't a, if Jesus did not rise again from the dead, if there's no resurrection, let me be honest today. We just pack up our books, our Bibles, and everything, our bags, and we all go home. There wouldn't be any reason to gather without the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the joy today is because he lives, and indeed lives forevermore, there is hope. Death has been conquered. Death has been overcome. O grave, where is thy victory? Where is the sting of death? He has conquered it. He's taken it. And that brings great joy. And the joy to know that our loved ones that were separated and have passed on one day, it's that renewal, it's that greatness that we'll one day experience in him. But not only that, we can have abundant life now. Jesus said in John 10, John 10, 10, I have come to give life and give it more abundantly. I've come to give life now. Do you have life now? Life that has purpose and meaning in that? Do you have that? Jesus says he can bring that now. But then, after the comma, is what? Is the abundant life to come. But that abundant life to come, Jesus provided that. Jesus opened it up for all. But it's my choice and your choice what we do with that. And on Easter Sunday, I hope today that you've embraced that and brought that to it. The question I have this morning, as we've read the first nine verses of John 20 in here, is why was Jesus not revealed to the disciples and to Mary and the other women? Why, why was Jesus unknown to them? Well, the first reason was that when Mary went to the tomb, she saw a dead Christ. She saw a dead Christ. She saw a man who had passed on. That was her mindset. That was her thinking, right? Because she was doing the same thing that she did that day that people do today. She had the same thing. Mary's looking for a dead Christ. She was not coming to the tomb to witness the resurrection. She was coming to see in verse 1 and 2 that we read together. What was she doing? She was coming to prepare and anoint the body of a person who has passed on. And so it seems that in her mind she could not conceive that Jesus was alive. And she was seeing as someone who had already died. She came to witness, not witness a resurrection, but to give and prepare the body of someone who'd passed on. You see, Mary was like many of the others, but her relationship with Jesus, that she loved him deeply. We're going to see in a few moments as we read the other scriptures that her loss and her separation and her love of the Lord was so great that she didn't quite understand and grasp but you see in here that she was one who came not to witness the resurrection, but prepare and to anoint the body of someone who had passed on. You see, she had known the Lord, and she loved him so deeply because she yearned. She not only admired him and respected him and loved him deeply in that, but it's because of that great admiration and love in that that she went to the extent that she would go and try to even roll away a stone. It's amazing that she could not do herself. The attention and the point to bring to you is a story by a, a, a father, a dad. And he was uh, bragging to his son that he was a great hunter. He, in fact, was uh, not only a great hunter, but he was a great duck hunter in the whole state. Bragging to his kids, and one day his one son got old enough to go hunting, and so he took him out, and he prepared the blind, and, and they got there, and they're waiting, they're laying down, and all of a sudden he sees this duck. He says, this is, this is the opportunity I've been waiting for, and here's this duck coming, flying, just flying so slow and so low, and it's going, oh, he said, this is a perfect opportunity. He takes his shotgun, he raises it up aims it, gives both barrels, boom! And after it cleared, the smoke cleared, all of a sudden there's that duck 
It's still going slow and low. He turns to his son. He says, son, (laughs) you just witnessed a miracle. There goes a dead duck. (laughs) When Mary came to the tomb that early morning, she couldn't conceive that Jesus rose again, that, that he's alive. She saw Christ believing he's one had already passed on. But the second reason that Jesus seemed to be unknown and just was not revealed in the way wanted is because they didn't understand. The disciples did not understand the scriptures. They didn't understand because we read in there in verse 9, they still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise again. He told them, three days I will rise again. But they didn't understand it. But we see in here that, that, the, uh, that two times here in the story, we in, spe- in fact, in the New Testament, two times of people running. Now, we know that there are many instances of metaphorically people are running. But here we only, we have two instances of people running. And both times the running is in the Easter story in there. Because we see that Mary and the other women, as they Mary heard, and she gets the women, and they run to the tomb, and they see. Then they run to the disciples and give them the news, and then they run back to the tomb. Can I tell you today, it's the only the Easter message will get you up and excited enough to have you run. I mean, Earl today, did you see Earl running? I mean, he was just moving. It's the only thing that gets Earl up and running. Now, <laughs> But you see, the Easter message is one that will get you up and running. And so Peter... The ladies, they're all excited, but as they look in the tomb, they still didn't understand in the midst of that, of that. The third truth of why they were unknown is disciples did not persist in finding him. They walked for three and a half years with Jesus. They heard his teachings. They heard his life, but they didn't persist in finding him. And when we don't persist in that, then we don't have that hope. And you see, when you don't have hope in there, what happens? Then Easter's just another day. If you don't have the hope that's birthed in your breast and birthed in your heart, Easter is just another day. But you see, without hope, we don't have light. We don't have that light in the deepest, darkest times of our life. It, it is hope that gives us the energy, that energizes our body when we're tired. It renews us. And the Easter message should get you excited. It should renew you. It should energize you. It's the only thing that got the disciples up and excited. But you see, because they didn't persist, they were left out. They were left out of the moment of the joy of the resurrection. You see, there's something about persistence. It's something about keep going on and not to be lax in it, but to move in that. And so today is a day they're historical, that Jesus is more than just a historical fact, but that today he will be your Savior. If you haven't made that, if you haven't welcomed that, if you haven't embraced that, I trust today you have. Because there's so many in our society that look just at Jesus, a historical figure. I remember years ago, magazines would have Jesus the historical. And oh, all wonderful things about his life, about his teaching, who he did, he's compassionate, loving, kind. He's that, but much more. He's Lord. He's our Savior. Indeed, he is one that, that has brought that life and hope. But they didn't persist, and they were left out of it. But fourthly, we see in here, we didn't read it, but we see that Mary was left out of the moment because her disappointment was so great of the fact that she came to the tomb t- so great that it, it, it affected her discernment. She just wanted to go love the Lord. We have the scripture in here. Let me read a portion of it here. So when the disciples went back to their homes, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize it was Jesus. Woman, 
he said. Why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Isn't it something? The depth of her loss showed the greatness of her love. The depth of her loss showed how much she loved him. She loved, Jesus had meant so much to her in life. And as I said before, she was willing to see that someone must have stolen his body and she was willing to roll a stone away to find it. She had to see him. She loved him deeply. You see, sometimes in those times of of loss at a funeral, a memorial service, sometimes those who've lost loved ones, you've been in that situation where they say, uh, were you there? I, I, I'm not sure that you were there. The, the, the loss and the, the grief that they share, the sorrow is so deep and so heartfelt that sometimes they just don't understand all of it. They don't, it's too much for them to handle in the moments of grief that they share. And I believe that was Mary's consternation. I believe that was Mary. She was loving the Lord so much and wanted to do that. She was willing that loss she, she was feeling in it. But the, the fourth reason, or fifth reason, is Thomas. Thomas is the unbelieving disciple. Thomas is, is the one that withdrew from Christian fellowship. He was the one that said what? He said, if I do not see Jesus, if I don't see his nail-scarred hands, if I can't press my finger into the holes, if I can't do that and see, I will not believe. You see, Jesus, the beautiful words he shared is what? That same day of that evening, he walked and came into the upper room. He walked into their life. He walked into where Thomas And you see, that's why it's important that once, twice a year is not enough for us, is it? Once, twice a year is not enough. You need to be around other believers, other people to feed upon your faith. As the Hebrew writer says, we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but we're to gather all the more so long as the day approaches. And so as the day approaches and the Lord tarries, we're to take that opportunity to gather But you see, Thomas wasn't there. As Jesus went in with the ten of the other disciples, he walked in, and what did he say to them? What did he? He said beautiful words. He said, peace. Peace I give to you. And you see, the question I have for you today is what changed the disciples? What changed the disciples? Well, the absence of Jesus In the tomb didn't change the disciples because when Mary with the other women came to the tomb and saw he wasn't there and they told Peter and the other disciples and they ran to the tomb and they looked in and he's not there, where did they go? They went back to their homes. They went back to the same shut doors, same fears, same disappointment, same delusionment, same questions. They went to the same Nothing changed. The absence of Jesus, the fact that he's not in the tomb, that's not going to change you. That's a fact. You can believe that. I stand here and I can walk back and forth and I can say Jesus isn't there. Jesus is in the tomb. I could walk back and forth and I could say to you, I could report to you that Jesus has arisen. He arose. He lives forevermore. That's good news. That's not going to do much for you. The absence of Jesus and the report of the resurrection didn't change them. What changed them? It was Jesus walked into their life. When Jesus walked in and said, peace, all of a sudden, the fears and the disappoint, disillusionment, the, they're, they're all going to dissipate. They're all going to go by the wayside in that. The only thing that changes a person's life, the only thing that changed my life, and hopefully that you, but you today, this morning, the only thing that will change you is the personal presence of Jesus walking into your life. 
Have you allowed him to do that? Have you allowed him to walk in and do that? That's the only thing that changed the disciples. Because before that, they're still behind locked doors. They didn't understand. They looked in and he's not there. So he's not in the tomb, but that didn't change them. They went back to the same fears. And the same thing happens today. The people look, he's historical fact. He crucified. He died on Good Friday. And they look at what a great man he was. What a great teacher. One who brought moral and great truths and compassionate. Jesus loves. He's all of that. But he's much more. Jesus is Lord. He is God. And he has conquered death itself. What about you this morning? Can I say this? That God may be saying to you, Mom, Dad, Grandma, Grandpa, Aunt, Uncle, Son, Daughter, it's time, it's time for you to let me walk in your life. It's time, it's time. And the same thing that he did for the disciples, turning their disappointment and disillusionment and fears, all that they had to grip them and gave them no hope. When they walked, it allowed me to walk into their life. You know, the wonderful promise in Revelation 3.20 says, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at your heart's door, and I knock. If any man, boy or girl, open that door, what will he do? Jesus says, I will come in, and I will live with him, and I will sup with him, and I will be with them, and I will be their Lord and Savior. It's the only thing that will change. Have you done that? Have you asked him to come in and do that? Jesus, yes, historical fact. There's historical evidence but there are also historical evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's that certitude that 2,000, over 2,000 years ago, we joined today in a wonderful Easter service. And many of you, your lives have been changed. Praise God for that. It's that that gives you hope. Without that joy of the resurrection, the excitement, we, we wouldn't have anything. It would be dark, dim, dismal, constant. But Jesus brought light and hope. Do you have that light and hope? It's the greatest joy. It's the greatest thing. My life was changed at 18 years of age. I've shared it before. You've heard it. And it changed. Christ come in. Do I know all things? No, not at all. But I'm telling you, when I opened it, my life, God's never disappointed me. Not at all. I'm not immune from difficulties. not immune from things, the blows of life. No, none of us are. But I'm telling you, you have one who will walk with you. He'll go with you. He'll be with you in the times that are trying. And he'll bring the greatest joy in times of wonderful things in your life. Your portfolio, everything's working fine. Greatness. To have God in there, to, to have that. But even when things turn contrary and maybe a little, he is there. He'll uphold you. He'll walk with you. Do you have that today? I want to give you that opportunity. We're going to sing our closing hymn. And if you, you want that, you come see me after service and tell me. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, Lord, I need that. I want that, you to come into my life and heart. Change me. Make me yours. Forgive me of my sin and give me the hope of the resurrection. You pray that simple prayer right where you are, right now. You can have that change. It, yeah, it sounds it's simple. But allowing him to do that, that's my choice that I did many, many years ago and you can do. And so I hope today, if you haven't had that joy, give it to him and open your heart today. Would you join and stand with me this morning? Because he lives.
Our loving Lord, we thank you this morning for the glorious truth that you are alive and you resurrect forevermore and you hold the keys of hell, death, and the grave itself. And we say hallelujah. And Lord, what joy is ours as we leave. May your Holy Spirit guide us in this day. And Lord, speak peace to our heart and give us renewed hope and give us a sense of satisfaction and purpose in all we do and even the things that you're open to us to do as we serve you, to serve you with love. And Lord, as long as you tarry, we continue, Lord, to honor, bless, and praise you. And today, what a day to give you praise and glory in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen.